In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Substance Designer, and we're going to be taking a look at how we can bake our different maps, and then set up a really simple graph to get some colors on our model and test out some of the different maps that we're baking out. So let's go ahead and get started, and first we're going to hop on over to ZBrush real quick just to take a look at the model that we're going to be looking at in these different programs. So this is the high-res model that we have. And this model is actually made up of two different parts here. So if I put on solo, you can see we've got the, this main part of the helmet, and then we've got this kind of a flap thing that goes on the back of that. And those two pieces together make up um, the total of the helmet. And so this is a fairly high res uh, piece of geometry. You can see if we click on both of these, this is the kind of uh, polygon uh, density that we're looking at for this uh, different helmet. And the other thing to note is that we've got um, vertex color on here with our uh, poly painting information and that's going to be used as our uh, material ID or our, our color mask that we're going to generate inside of Substance Designer and that's going to help us in both Substance Designer and Substance Painter to be able to say and designate what these different colors mean. If they're going to mean color, you could use it for color, you could also use it for different materials and things like that. So in the earlier video we already took a look at how we can export these things out, use Decimation Master to get that polygon count down. Um, and then we also looked at taking uh, Maya and then resurfacing that. So here we are inside of Maya and just wanted to select this topology and help you understand exactly what this thing looks like and what we're going to uh, be baking stuff down to. So this one was uh, resurfaced by hand and I think this one uh, matches the surface um, pretty pretty good and the topology is uh, you know pretty good. It's not super dense on it either. So I think this is going to be a pretty good example of what it might look like when you take your high res object in your uh, your game res mesh and then you bake everything out. So I'm going to also show you the UV texture editor window. So we can take a look at the uh, UVs for this and how this has been laid out. So even though there are two different objects like this, they're going to share the same map space because when I'm done baking everything out, just want to have one texture set for this thing. So you can see this bottom piece actually sits, or this back piece sits here on the bottom. And this part here is going to fill up this part. And if I hold down shift and select that, you can see everything together in that zero to one space. So that's what uh, sits there for that. This was exported out as a, um, as a mesh. And uh, so is this one as well. So we've got two low res game res meshes. And then we also have our two um, high res meshes that you just saw inside of ZBrush. And that's what makes up uh, the total of this model here. Now I do have a helmet that is uh, merged together. Um, so it's those two pieces so I can see them both at the same time. And everything was um, exported as FBX files. So we have a, um, a part of the helmet that was uh, just the, the main part of the helmet that we saw here, like this thing. And then we also have this back plate, this thing here. And then I have this helmet all. If I click and drag that over, you can see that. And uh, those two pieces together are going to make up the total of the helmet. So depending on how you want to uh, bake things out, um, you might have some kind of setup like this, what I have here. The reason I'm doing it in uh, two parts is because this thing sits pretty close to the helmet and I wanted to have the ability later on to animate this thing to move it so I didn't want any baking from this to interfere with the helmet or anything from the helmet interfering with this piece either. So we're going to take a look at how we get everything in here, how we can build up our own resources and uh, you know get everything set up just so we can start building out this graph network that you see here. All right, in Substance Designer, we're going to start off with a brand new project. And so this is something like what you probably should see whenever you first load the program up. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and click this little icon here, and then this is going to give us a new graph that we can build. Um, we're going to be using the Metal Rough uh, version of this. This is what works uh, really well with using Unreal Engine 4, and so that's why we're going to be choosing this one here. And you can give it a graph name, so we can call this uh, Helmet something like that. You can name it whatever you want for yours. So the size, the size of the um, textures that we're going to be baking out. I'm going to be using 4096 by 4096 and we have these different size modes which is set to absolute 
or relative to parent. And we'll get into that more whenever we get into the graphs, but I'm just going to leave this on absolute right there. And this format, we can put it on uh, relative to parent as well. And then just go ahead and hit OK for that. Um, you can see that you can go through and you can choose these different uh, these different settings if you want to do something different than the metallic and roughness. Um, but we're going to go ahead and use that one. I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK for this. And you can see it's going to give us right off the bat, the bat these output nodes that you can see here. And so we've got a base color. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. I'm just using the uh, the mouse scroll wheel, or we can right click and move up and down to zoom in and out. You can middle mouse to move and pan around in here like that. And so as we get closer, we can read this stuff a little bit easier. And you can see we've got this output here for this base color, a normal map, roughness, and metallic. Now we're going to add some more to this. Uh, we'll look at that in a little bit later, but we're going to get our resources in here right now. We could also just save this thing quickly, so we can just right click over it and say save as, and might as well give a, uh, a place to save it. I'm just going to put mine on the desktop real quick for this and just call it helmet like that, just so I've got something to start saving with in here. And so once I have this set up, I can right click on here and I can say uh, new folder and we can start to be organized with our stuff if you want so we can uh, right click on here and say rename and call this resources you can call this whatever you want but this uh, can actually help so here's the part where we're going to get our different meshes in here at least to a, a way to where we can start baking things and start looking at our models with inside of here so if we right click over resources we can say link you could import this stuff in you could import in uh, meshes and things like that but we're gonna go ahead and link a 3d mesh so we're just go to link go to 3d mesh and then you're gonna go want to go navigate to where your actual pieces are so I've got a uh, this high, helmet high that I've called and I didn't decimate it so I've got no decimation I'll go ahead and open that and that's going to add that in here. And as soon as you add something, you can click and drag it over into this window. And if you want to look at it, the you know the more dense that the model is, the longer it's going to take for this thing to kind of load in through here. Uh, but you can definitely check out all your different models uh, through here, and you're going to be able to pull in OBJs, and you're going to be able to pull in FBX files as well. Okay, so you can see here is our model that we have here. So it's pretty dense, so that's why it's going to kind of move around a little bit slowly for this but uh, to rotate just click left click and drag and if you want to pan just middle click and drag and if you want to zoom in and out you can just uh, right click and move up in a down motion and that's going to zoom you in and out like that you can also hold down shift and then click and drag in the viewport and through here and you can kind of change the direction of the light that you see here if you want to start moving this map around on your object, you can go to this little gear icon and click on that thing. And it's going to open up this area and through here, you're going to be able to turn on and off the uh, the IBL, the image-based lighting that you see in here. And this is actually something that you can do to uh, move that image around and change the actual lighting in through there. Okay, so there's that piece there. I'm going to go ahead and right-click and say Link and I've got a 3D mesh. I also have this part of the helmet, the back part. And so I'll go ahead and open that up. And then I'll also right click and I'll link um, my 3D mesh. And I believe I've got um, my model saved out as an OBJ. So here's my different game res meshes that I've got in a folder. And I've got um, a helmet and I've got the helmet all that's got those two pieces that we talked about and I also have this back plate thing that we got here I'm just gonna see if I can actually load multiple objects at the same time so I'm gonna click on one of these hold down control and add this and hit open and it looks like it's uh, possible to do that so that's pretty cool so I can click and drag these in right in through here and we can just check out the different models and take a look at them um, if we want to turn on wireframe we can go to display and you can actually see the different geo for that and turn that off there's also a grid down here you can turn on and off the grid if you want and through there and so there's that part for the helmet all here's this part for this helmet in the black 
back plate thing that I've got going on here. And the only one we didn't check out was this one here, this high res one, which is going to take a little bit longer to load up. And so I do have all the different pieces that uh, I'm going to be looking for. Okay, so let's uh, save this real quick. Just save that again. And then now let's take a look at actually starting to bake some of this stuff off. And let's work with the helmet uh, first for this, okay? Um, so to start baking, it's pretty simple. We just take the piece that we want to uh, start baking with, and we right-click over it, and we say Bake Model Information. That's going to open up this um, dialog box that you see here, and I'm just going to clear everything out to make sure we're starting from scratch like this. So this is the low-res uh, piece of geometry that we imported in, and you can see that it's loaded over and through here. And if we want to start baking a map, let's first look at uh, baking a normal map. So we'll just click this plus and say normal map from mesh. And it's going to give us some different parameters. We can bake it out to tangent space, normal map. You could use a world space if you want, but we're going to do tangent space. Uh, normal orientation. So I'm going to use DirectX, and I think that works uh, pretty good if you're going to be pushing stuff over to uh, UE4. So here is where we need to set up something for uh, whenever it kicks out the different maps that it's going to bake. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a location. I'm going to make a folder on the desktop. I'm just going to right click and say new and I'll call this uh, bakes like this. Double click and say select folder. So you can see now it's going to any maps that it bakes out uh, it's going to temporarily store them on, I saved it on the desktop in this bakes folder. You can also choose the file format to, uh, that it's going to be baked out to. If you're really worried about bit depth or anything, not losing any kind of information, you could use TIFF, but I've been using Targus for things and it seems to work out okay. Um, here's where we can choose the output size. So we're going to do 4096 by 4096. If you have multiple UV sets, you're able to uh, take a look at that and change that up. Dilation width is how many pixels does it bleed out from the UV border. And I've been leaving that um, where it's at, but there's no reason why you can't uh, bump that up a little bit if you want to. Um, here's where we define our high definition meshes. So let's clear this out with this X here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit plus to add a mesh. And we can say from file or from resources. If we go from resources, we made that resource folder that we have here, and we can go ahead and find the high res um, helmet that we have. So that's one way of doing it, right? The other way is if we add this thing and say from file, you can actually navigate uh, to a very specific place for where that file actually sits. So if I could do um, my helmet right here like that. And then this is going to give you know uh, a location for that thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just go and use from resources, and then I'm going to say helmet high like that. And um, this frontal distance and rear distance f is going to determine how far out a ray casts to uh, catch a surface for the normal map. So if you see kind of holes in your model, you might have to kind of play around with these values to find the uh, the right distance on there. Um, the other thing is anti-aliasing. It's going to take longer the you know the higher the sampling that you put on here, but uh, at least you know I'm going to I'm going to give it two by two at least for that. Okay, and then once everything's set up, we can just hit OK, and it should run through, and it's going to load up the high res model and the low res model. And it's going to go through a process of baking. So this can, you know, take a little while depending on how high res your high res mesh is and everything is going to, you know, determine how long that process is actually going to take. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it and wait till it finishes up. Okay, that finished up and it finished baking rather quickly. So you can see that um, after I've made this, uh, we, we used the helmet here and it made this resource folder right next to it and it put the normal map right there. So we can click and drag this thing out into here or we can double click on it and view it in this area. So if I do this button here, it's going to show you the entire map or we can go one and then we can middle mouse drag and uh, take a look at this thing uh, 
at uh, one to one and see what it baked out. So to get this on to the model, we're going to click and drag it through here. And I'm going to use the middle mouse scroll wheel just to zoom in a little bit and middle mouse to pan. And I'm going to click and drag. And then I'm going to drag this output right into this input for the normal map. And you shouldn't see anything happen. Nothing's going to happen until we right click over here and say view in 3D view. And we can choose what do we want to look for this thing. So we're going to look at the normal map for that. Okay, so now you're going to be able to see that normal map applied to this thing and see the uh, baking quality that it baked out for this. So real quick, just so we can see this thing a little bit better, I'm going to move this base color up right here, put the normal map here, and I'm going to drag this down just a little bit just to give a little bit of space in between each one of these like this. And move it there like that. Okay, for roughness, I'm going to go ahead and give it a value. So I'm going to right click on here and say add node and we can do a uniform color like this. And it plugged it directly into the base color. Mm, okay, let's just not fight it. Let's just let it go to that. That's fine. And we can double click on this thing and it's going to give us this uh, color that we can kind of choose. So if we wanted it to be you know, let's just say something like that. That's fine. And then we can right click on this thing, say view and 3D view, and we'll put this on base color to fuse like that. And then now that we've got one of these made, we can copy and paste, or we can just right click and say add node and use that uniform color. And I'm going to drag out one here and one right here like this. So roughness, let's talk about roughness real quick. So you need to think of this as a as a value. So if something has no roughness and we make that thing black like this, so there's no value on that thing. And we right click on here and say view and 3D view and put that on roughness. Something like glass or something like that is going to have no roughness to it. It's not rough at all, right? But if we want to make that thing more rough, we can change that value and we can lift that value up. And you can see how it turns matte as it goes all the way to white like this. So middle, somewhere, somewhere in the middle there, it's going to give us this kind of uh, sheen. And if we pull that down even further, it's going to get more highlights on there. And so I'll put it somewhere right about there for now. Okay, so now we were looking at if we hold down shift and then click and drag around, we can kind of change. Uh, there's a light within here, so if we go to that gear box icon thing here again, we're kind of changing the position of this uh, white light that you see here. And again, we can turn on and off that, that view, this visible and uh, viewport for the environment, and we can start to rotate that uh, image around to change our actual lighting as well. Something else that we can do is go to uh, the environment maps down here and we can click and drag into new uh, lighting scenarios within here. So we can test out different lighting scenarios on here just like that and um, let's just put it back on this one. I kind of like that one. Okay, so there's that for this one, metallic. Now, supposedly, the way that you're supposed to kind of view this is if something is metallic, then it's got a value of pure white. So let me double click on that and then change that to white like this. Um, and that would be if it's metallic and I need to right click on there and say view in, view in 3D put it on metallic and you can see how that changes things quite a bit. So when you use metallic it, um, it definitely gives it a more metallic feel obviously um, but it also increases uh, saturation and contrast that's what I've noticed about it. Now I've been told you're really not supposed to do anything other than it's metallic or not but it's possible that you can give it in between uh, values as well uh, if you if you want this might not be physically accurate, but um, if you're trying to just tune it and get it to look maybe a specific way, you might want to mess around with that a little bit. So I'm just going to put this up 
to white like this I'll actually treat it as if it is metallic and then you can see now the the amount of roughness comes into play as well with this so maybe we don't need as much roughness anymore if you wanted it to be kind of a more dull looking uh, metal like that and maybe we could change the value of this thing for the color somewhere in here so this is a base setup and we know everything's kind of uh, working for us right now so let's look at baking some additional maps okay so we've already baked out the normal map for the helmet let's just right click on here and say bake model information and it'll pull everything back up of what we were looking at before this time let's go ahead and we'll add uh, ambient occlusion from uh, map from mesh and that will bake out an AO map for us and we're gonna bake out color map from mesh let's take a look at this one this is gonna be on vertex color that's what we exported out from um, ZBrush with the poly painting information that we saw there and we're going to also add a curvature map this one wants you to plug in a normal map which we've already baked that out so we can just say from previous bakers and we just say normal map from mesh on there and it's um, it's not a world space uh, map so you can see if we check that that would say it's true we're plugging in a, a tangent space map so we can leave that alone right there then if we come here we already did the normal map from uh, mesh we're going to do a position which is a gradient it'll do a gradient going from the bottom to the top and then from left to right and then from front to back and you can use those for different uh, materials later on for saying something like dirt or something that you know dust or things like that sits on top of an object but not at the bottom so that's how you would use some of this stuff from position um, the thickness map from mesh we can do that one as well and the other one we're going to do is this uh, world space normals like this and we're going to go ahead and take this and plug in from our previous bakers our normal map from mesh like that we don't have to bake the normal map again so we can turn that off um, now here's something to talk about real quick because if we hit OK it's going to go through and it's going to start baking all these different maps um, so if you wanted something one of these maps to be uh, have a different setting than everything else you can use this override parameters common to all bakers so let's say this position map um, output size if I wanted this thing to be 1024 by 1024 and all the other ones are 4096 by 4096 I can check this little box here and override some of that stuff for this thing here also if you you know if you wanted to use a different mesh to bake or anything else like that any of these parameters for each one of these you can click this override to common and you can do something special with it okay so now that it's all set up I'm just gonna go ahead and hit OK and it's gonna go load up our models again and it's gonna go through that baking process so I'm gonna pause the video again and when it's done making these maps we'll take a look at them all right, everything finished baking up. So let's take a look at some of the different maps that it generated. So you can see back here on our area for the uh, helmet, um, we've got our different things that baked out. And I accidentally kind of messed up. I actually, actually used this helmet all to uh, bake things out. Let's take a look if that messed anything up or not. I'll double click on the ambient occlusion part here, and we can see we've got some stuff baked down through here. So that's what that one looks like. So the AO is going to make, you know, pretty much sense anywhere where it's kind of got cracks and where light can't travel into. It's going to make that a little bit darker. Here's our color map from Mesh, and again, we're going to be able to use this to select these colors and be able to uh, say if something is some certain material in through here, or we can use this to designate uh, separating out colors. This is curvature, and so. I don't think this looks correct for the curvature, so we'll take a look at uh, trying to figure out why that one didn't bake out correctly. Um, but it should have high contrast around areas for edges and things like that. Um, this is going to tell the program if you've got this kind of shader or material that's got uh, dirt and edge 
edge wear, things like that, paint scratches, it's probably going to happen on the edges a bit more than other places. So that builds a mask for you for this. Here's our position that we have for um, that we were taking a look at. Uh, remember, that's going to be a gradient uh, going from left to right and top to bottom. And if we looked at those as individual channels, um, like this, and turn that off, you can see red is going to give us a direction, green would give us another direction, and then blue would give us uh, our third direction. So you can choose red, green, or blue in these different, uh, you know, different shaders to kind of say a direction for something. Again, where that probably makes the most sense is something like, uh, you know, dust or something like that being built up on the top of a model rather than the bottom. Here's our thickness uh, map from mesh, and this is pretty good for if you're doing uh, subsurface scattering, things like that, these type of effects where you want to say something about the, uh, the overall thickness of an object. And then we've got our helmet uh, all in world space normals. The reason that this didn't um, work out correctly is because we used previous Baker, and the map that we need for that is actually sitting right up here. So we can fix that pretty quick. I'm just going to go right back to here and say um, bake model information. And we need to um, take a look at the, what is this, the curvature. So we'll do the curvature again, and we'll do world space normals again. So curvature, this time I'm going to override the parameters on there like what we talked about. And instead of doing a previous um, baker, we could do... Um, from, let's see, we can do from a resource, so we could actually choose this normal map here. We could do that, or we could have went to from a file and chose actually where that file sits on our desktop, because remember we baked things out to that uh, bakes folder, and we could have chose that normal map. So you got different options for it. Um, I'll just do that. Same thing for the world uh, space normals. I'll go here, and I'll choose from resources and choose that map that's already been baked out. Hit OK, and I think that these should go through pretty quickly because it's just adding the uh, tangent space um, information to those maps. So here's our curvature, and again, that's why I was saying this one's going to look more like this, and it's got this really high contrast on here like that, and then our world space normals that we've got here like that. So that's what's uh, been generated out for us. Um, so let's take a look at being able to look at these different maps. Um, we need some different output types that just don't exist right now because um, when we first made this thing, we made a new graph like this, we could, um, at least in the past, it was, it was um, possible for you to add more than just these uh, few that uh, came with it with these base colors and things like that. Uh, it doesn't look like the ability to do that is there anymore. So if I want those map types, it's pretty easy to add a node. And I can say add node, and I'm going to go to output. And it's going to make this new output that's blank. And I can just click and drag uh, that thing in here. It actually added it up here, which was kind of interesting, and I don't need this line here. So let's select it, and I'll hit delete, and I'll move this down here. So I know that I want um, ambient occlusion, so I can click on this output node, and you can see in the usage, I'm going to say add item, and I'm going to find ambient occlusion, like this. And I could also give it a name. Right now it's just named output, it's just very generic but I can steal this name, ambient occlusion, and for the identifier I can paste that in here like that and just click off and you can see now, let's go ahead and hit enter for that and make sure it does this and I can double click that and it should change this name over here to ambient occlusion. So let's take uh, helmet ambient occlusion, click and drag it out like this and pipe it into this one here like that and I'm going to right click in here and say view in 3D view and I'm going to plug it into ambient occlusion like that. And you can see it's going to change the specular component of this so you can see it's already getting darker in through these different areas because of the ambient occlusion map. So that's that one being plugged in. Let's just go down the line for this stuff. So I'm going to drag this thing out here which is the color map 
and I'll take the curvature and I'll take the position and the thickness and again we're making all these different maps because we're gonna be able to use them in Substance Designer that's one area that you can use it but you can take all of these map types that I've shown you how to bake out and plug them into uh, Substance Painter and when you start painting on things and starting making materials you're gonna be able to use these different maps and it's gonna help you out a lot uh, later on down the road so after one of these is made um, you can copy or paste it since it's got a name I'm just gonna make a new one I'm gonna copy and paste that so copy I'll paste that put it right in here paste that put it right there and you can take time to line everything up with the grid and everything I'm just gonna leave it like this so again this is our world space and for each one of these we're just gonna go through and see if we've got this stuff world space normal for this one and again I can copy the name I'll paste it in here hit enter and I'll drag that thing out like that and just connect it up this one is our this is our thickness map so let's go here add item let's just go find thickness like that steal the name paste it up move it over here like that this one is our position so I'll add that item look for position right here and if you don't see it you can actually even type in whatever name you want for this thing in that area if it doesn't exist so let's go ahead and paste that in here and then this one is our curvature So let's find that right here. I'll drag that over like that. Steal the name. Paste it in here. And this one is, um, let's see what the name is for this thing. I think they have something for mask ID. I think that's what I'd like to name that. Copy. I'll paste that and I'll put that right here and there like that. So let's see if we right click over any of these and see if there's any type that we can grab from this. And so it doesn't look like a, there's anything more that we can really test out with this thing. We can take the um, this color ID and just plug it into our base color. We can check that out pretty easily like that. And if you want, we can drag this thing right back like that. Now. Um, now we're going to start looking at a little bit more advanced things for this. Um, you know, this is basically what we need. If you want to jump straight into going to Substance Painter, you're probably going to want to save this thing here. You're going to want to come to this area and right click and say Compute Outputs, and it's going to push everything that you see here, and it's going to push it to these output nodes. And once the output nodes are set there, you can uh, right click here and say export outputs as bitmaps. And you can tell it what kind of file format that you want to save it out to. I'm going to use color, uh, Targa, sorry. And I don't need the base color. This is assuming I'm going to be pushing all this um, over to Substance Painter. I do want the normal, I don't need the roughness, don't need metallic. I do want ambient occlusion, I want this mask ID, I want curvature, position, thickness, and world space uh, normals. And you can see, looks like maybe I spelled that thing incorrectly right there. Um, but you can fix that up, not a big deal. So here's where I could tell it to uh, spit this thing out. So we could um, make a new folder and call this final bakes like this and go within here and say select folder and this is where it's going to spit everything out to you. so we can save all for that and let's just do this here we'll save them all and it should spit it out and let's check it on the desktop real quick and we'll call this uh, this final bakes and so you can see here's the different maps that it's spit out for us and if we take a look at them we can see uh, these different um, these different images that were spit out of the program that we're going to be able to pull into Substance uh, Substance Painter. 
so that's if you're just kind of wanting to get this stuff out of here. If you want to um, learn a little bit more, I think I'm going to break this video off. It's starting to get a little bit long. And this next part will be if you want to start taking a look at uh, maybe a little bit more advanced um, stuff and substance uh, designer, just as far as like building a really simple graph and stuff like that. But uh, this is just for the people that want to take some of these maps and start kind of playing around with them in Substance Designer, okay?